Hi, we've got a quick video on the GPS disciplined oscillator today. So the unit was working fine for a couple of days and then two days ago while I was sitting in the lounge I heard a really loud bang. Um, I had a quick look around the house, it sounded like someone had smashed a window or something like that but I couldn't see anything um, and then didn't really think anything of it. And then I came to sit down to the computer later on that night and noticed that very characteristic smell of burning tantalum capacitors. So when I was working on the board I did have a quick think to myself that maybe I should replace those capacitors. The unit's reasonably old and tantalum capacitors do have a nasty habit of exploding when they get close to the end of life or when they're used in situations where they've got a high ripple current or just when they're used close to their ratings. So we'll just have a quick look down at the board um, and have a look at the damage. Right, so here we have the capacitor that's failed. It's just underneath the GPS receiver daughter board and you can see it's uh, really uh, exploded quite violently. There's bits of the tantalum capacitor all over the case. The only slightly worrying thing is there's a SOT23 part just here uh, which either looks to be slightly molten or um, there's a bit of the capacitor attached to it. I haven't been able to assess the damage yet. The unit does still work uh, but this capacitor is on the 15 volt supply rail um, and the capacitors in the unit are all rated for 16 volts so it was already being used very close to its rating uh, something that I'd not normally do especially with tantalum capacitors so what we'll do is we'll take the daughter board off see if there's any damage underneath because usually you get quite a reasonable flame coming off the tantalum capacitor for a couple of seconds um, and then what we'll try and do is replace all of the tantalum capacitors in the unit. Okay, so I've undone the nuts. Let's have a look to see if there's any damage to this PCB. And surprisingly, uh, no damage whatsoever. There's a little bit of darkening um, just around here, but this board seems to have uh, survived quite well. So here we have the capacitors which I'm going to replace the tantalums with. You can see they're a lot thinner than standard tantalum capacitors and that's because these are tantalum polymer capacitors which are a significant improvement on tantalum capacitors. They've got less tantalum in them, they're more stable, they've got a lower ESR um, and they will withstand kind of higher ambient temperatures. In the past tantalum capacitors were very popular because they offered uh, low ESR at uh, kind of capacitances that weren't covered very well either by electrolytic or uh, ceramic capacitors so kind of in the range of half a microfarad to 100 microfarads. These days you can get ceramic capacitors up to um, 47 microfarads, I think I've seen some that are 100 microfarads but at low voltages and then there's now significant improvements in electrolytic capacitors meaning you can get very low ESR um, at um, these kind of ratings. So these are from Panasonic. Um, they weren't significantly more expensive than the tantalums that I was going to replace them with so um, I think these were just under a pound each so a little bit pricey. There's 10 of these to replace on the board uh, but these should be good for quite a long time now. So I've not got a set of tweezers for my Metcal uh, but the second best thing is just to use two soldering irons to remove the capacitor. Make sure you note which way round the capacitors are. I've also taken a picture of the board just to make sure that I get them right. Um, and then you just place a soldering iron on each end and lift the component out of the way. So I'm going to do that with all of the capacitors on the board. I'll clean up the mess from the capacitor which has exploded um, and then solder the new ones back in place. So here we have the SOT23 part which I was slightly worried about and it's definitely faulty. I've used the multimeter just to uh, see if we've got any continuity between these pins and we've got uh, zero ohms either way round um, and there's only two pins connected here so this is almost certainly a diode and if we zoom out slightly um, you can see in the top right here we've got another part which is a SOT23 part with just two pins connected labelled A6 and this is just a standard diode in a SOT23 package, so a BAS16. So the same two pins are connected on this part, so I'm inclined to believe that this is the same uh, part as this. Um, I haven't got any of those diodes, but I've got some uh, BAT54s. They're shocky versions with two diodes, but the uh, diode is biased in the same direction. So I should be able to just replace this one with a BAT54 and it should behave the same. 
And then if we zoom out slightly, uh, we've got the header which goes to the GPS board and the top left hand pin here is the 5 volt supply which powers the board and also the GPS antenna now. Uh, this was the 15 volt supply to the GPS antenna and now isn't used on the board and this is the one that's connected to the capacitor which blew up and also the um, SOT23 diode which is presumably for some over voltage protection. And then just over here we've got an end channel MOSFET from International Rectifier um, and a national dual channel op amp. So we've got nothing there now so that part was definitely uh, faulty. I don't think the track underneath is damaged. So I was slightly worried that this trace was damaged. Um, it looked like it may have been broken but it was just a layer of burnt um, solder mask on the PCB. So I'll replace this diode, put the capacitor on here, screw it back together and then we'll just talk about the uh, issue of the whole device getting quite warm. So I've just turned the device on, uh, connected the GPS antenna and we've got the flashing red light so hopefully it will lock onto the satellites and everything should work properly. But I'll leave that going in the background. Um, in the meantime, um, so I did notice the unit was getting quite warm so it draws about 10 to 12 watts continuously uh, which in a sealed enclosure is going to cause it to get quite warm. Um, it was slightly uncomfortably warm for my liking uh, just inside so I have cut two holes in the lid and I've bought a quiet fan so this is the same style as the one that I used in the Rigol only this is the um, six centimeter version instead of the five centimeter version um, and this is a computer case fan designed to run at 12 volts. Now I don't want loads of airflow going through this device because I don't want the um, oven oscillator to be w working over time. Uh, just want a little bit of airflow just so that there's uh, enough air to get out because we have got the um, power supply in there as well underneath so I don't really want that getting massively warm. So I'm planning on running this on the 5 volt rail uh, somewhere from inside the uh, unit and I've got some fan grills uh, but I'm slightly conscious that I don't want loads of dust getting in but also I don't want to accidentally be able to drop anything um, actually into the unit because this uh, fan hole would uh, end up just above the GPS board. So I'm going to have one intake so that we've got positive pressure within the case and that means it's not going to try and draw any dust in through any of the orifices so uh, we're only going to draw in air from uh, one fan hole blowing straight onto the DC to DC. Uh, actually, yeah, we've got a green light here, so um, it seems to be working okay. Um, but um, I don't want uh, the DC to DC to get too warm either, because that was alarmingly warm. Um, so we're going to have the fan on this side blowing down onto the DC to DC. Um, and then this one will just be left open, but just so there's somewhere for the air to get out, because it's actually a sealed case. Um, I also bought these... Uh, fan filters and these are also uh, EMI filters so they're designed to block RF. Um, they're a bit crap actually, they're slightly sharp on the corners. I think they're designed to mark uh, to mount sorry, um, outside the enclosure. I'm thinking I might run with the standard uh, fan grill on the outside and then mount this underneath just to try and trap any dust. So I'll mount this all together um, see if I can find a 5 volt supply. This does run very slowly at 5 volts, so it should just give us a nice little bit of airflow. Um, and then that should be everything done for the unit. So it looks like we've locked on correctly and the device is still working. I've now mounted the fan which is going to go above the DC to DC and put the fan filters in. So now I'm just going to try and pick off 5 volts to power the fan. And it looks like we've been quite lucky. We've got the output of the DC to DC here. So I've been able to solder a header on and I can just plug the fan in there and you can see we've got a running fan. So I'll just assemble this all back together and then I think we're done. So we've got the unit back together again now. Fortunately it all seems to be working properly. Um, it's making very slightly more fan noise than I would have liked so I might try and find some anti-vibration mounts for the fan. Now that the lid's on it is forming a resonant cavity so it could be picking up one of the frequencies being emitted by the fan and amplifying it. So I might also play with the fan speed slightly. Um, fortunately it all seems to be working. It would have been slightly annoying if we had terminal damage to the device after finishing uh, the project. Uh, but it would have prevented an interesting opportunity to design my own GPS disciplined oscillator. And it is something which I am considering doing anyway in the future using some more 
um, easily available parts such as the U-Blocks GPS modules and then a microcontroller, uh, an oven control oscillator and then a closed feedback loop to control the output. Um, so it is something I'm thinking of doing if there's any interest. Uh, but if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down. Uh, subscribe if you haven't already, and thanks for watching.